For the past few years, companies have tried to integrate desktop qualities into mobile devices. Some worthy mentions are Ubuntu Touch, Microsoft Continuum, but so far all have failed. But today, the future is here. At least, that is what Samsung wants you to believe with its recently released Galaxy Tab S4, Galaxy Note 9, and Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. So you may be wondering what makes these products so special and what sets it apart from everything else on the market. And that something is DeX. In today's video, we're going to cover what it is, what it can do, and ultimately, who is it for. So stay tuned. Most companies have attempted to turn your smartphone into the only computer you will ever need, and sadly all of them have failed. Samsung hopes to change everything with DeX, a software that is bundled with all of its flagship Android products that allow you to use a desktop-like interface when connecting your smartphone or tablet into an HDMI TV or monitor. DeX was first introduced last year with Samsung's Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, and Note 8, and while it was heavily criticized for a lackluster user experience, it has returned this year with a lot of promise. Activating DeX required you to purchase an expensive, extra proprietary docking station. But now, that's no longer necessary for the Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, the Note 9, and the Galaxy Tab S4. The only thing that you need is a DeX powered device and a USB C to HDMI adapter to get you started. We highly recommend purchasing a USB C multi port adapter, preferably one that includes both a USB A and a USB C port, and of course, an HDMI port. The multi port hub will act as a docking station, allowing you to charge your phone and attach legacy USB devices while utilizing DeX. For those who are interested, we got ours for about $40 Canadian. We will put a link of the product in the description below for both Canadian and US viewers. The first time that you connect your DeX powered device to an HDMI display, it will automatically start up the software. But in order for it to continue automatically starting up, you need to enable that function within the settings. None of the devices that Samsung sells come with a keyboard or mouse, so make sure that you have a spare set if you plan to use DeX. For this video, we have an older generation Bluetooth, Apple keyboard and trackpad, and we are pleasantly surprised that we connected everything without issue, while also retaining media key functions such as volume up and down, mute, etc. You can also use your smartphone and tablet as a touchpad or keyboard, but we feel that kind of defeats the purpose of using DeX. Down on the bottom right hand corner, you will find an expanded Android taskbar that includes access to your Bluetooth devices, Wi-Fi, notifications list, and basically everything you would find on your phone, with a few additions. The taskbar also includes a lock phone button, a virtual keyboard button that brings up the keyboard on your phone, a screenshot button, as well as a search button allowing you to hunt down any apps or files on your device. I have to say, Samsung did a pretty good job with the interface. It really does feel like you're using a full-blown computer, at least on the surface. Before we go into details on the negatives, I want to focus on what Samsung did right. In our tests, all the bundled applications were able to launch while in DeX mode. And all of the Samsung branded applications ran great, with the exception of Bigsby, but I don't really see that being a problem for most people. We were able to resize those apps seamlessly and without issue, just like you would with a normal desktop or laptop. Another plus is that the software treats the connected display like a secondary monitor, allowing you to continue using your smartphone or tablet as if it weren't connected. A very welcome change compared to last year's version. Okay, so now the real question. Can your tablet or smartphone be the only computer that you need? And the answer is maybe. At the end of the day, not every app from the Play Store works 100% with DeX. Well-supported apps such as those from Microsoft, Google, Citrix, VMware, as well as the photo and graphic editing apps found from Adobe all work pretty well. And you can find a full list of supported DeX apps from Samsung's website in the description below. This is great news for those that need only a small selection of applications, but this is really only a small handful that operate well. The rest of the millions of apps on the Google Play Store won't support window resizing, and some just won't outright work at all. Without the ability to resize apps, they will open in a small portrait window. As an example, I frequently use Trello for managing my day-to-day -day activities, but using the app on Dex feels really limiting. I also use TeamViewer to troubleshoot issues for some of my friends and family members, but because it's a touch-only application, I can't even start it up using Dex. One quick thing to note is that you can only have five active windows open at any given time. The good news is that the list of supported apps will only grow, so for those that want to consider replacing your desktop or laptop with a Dex-powered device, make sure to go on Samsung's website in the description below to find out if there's everything that you need before taking the plunge. Apps aside, 
We haven't done a full exhaustive test on what USB devices work, but so far we've tried an external hard drive, keyboard or mouse, as well as a USB headset. And our results were a bit mixed. Keyboard and mice work well for the most part, but there are a few things to keep in mind. Keyboard shortcuts are a bit different on Android compared to Windows, Mac, or even Chrome OS, but common ones such as copy and paste and cut work the same way. As for using a mouse or trackpad, you have to get used to the fact that the pointer acts like a finger press. Holding down the mouse button and dragging a cursor over text doesn't highlight it for copy and paste. Instead, you have to either double tap or long press on a particular word for the Android highlight markers to appear. Then you will have to drag one or both of the markers to where you want to highlight. Connecting an external hard drive worked, but only if that hard drive uses a FAT32 file extension. However, this can be remedied by installing third-party apps from the Google Play Store that will allow access to more modern file extensions. The USB headset that we used was able to output sound in apps such as YouTube or Google Play Music without needing to adjust any settings. But sometimes it would default to using the phone speakers, especially when we used applications such as Skype, WhatsApp, or Discord. We also weren't able to get the mic working in those apps. As of right now, Dex isn't quite there yet in terms of user experience and hardware compatibility for full-time use. We ran into some issues such as being unable to close and minimize apps, as well as the application drawer consistently not recognizing the first keystroke whenever you start typing. But if you're a writer, a business user, artist, or just someone that can live with only their Android phone and really, really want to use one device despite the compromises, then it is possible to replace your computers. But for everyone else, you might want to hold on to your desktop or laptop for a little bit longer. If you are interested with using a DeX powered device, I'll be putting down a link in the description below. While I don't think that DeX is quite ready to compete with Windows, Mac OS, or even Chrome OS, Samsung's top of the line are actually among the best that Android has to offer. Well, that's it for today. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you never want to miss another video, hit that subscribe button and check us out on Patreon in the link below. We post new tech reviews and videos weekly. Let us know your thoughts on Samsung's DeX software in the comment section down below. Bing out.